Hello, my name is Fred. And I'm Dan. And this is the Fred and Dan Show. <laughs> and we're going to have a little fun talking about anaerobic digestion. Not for everybody, but it's for us. Something that we're interested in. I want to find out more about it, and Dan knows all about it. I wish I knew all about it, but I don't. <laughs> I know some about it. <laughs> and he's willing to share. <laughs> Montana State University welcomes you to this short video series on anaerobic digestion for small and mid-sized farms. We are convinced that anaerobic digestion is an excellent strategy to convert farm waste into biogas and biofertilizer. This work has been supported by the National Institute of Food and Agriculture through the Western Agriculture Research and Education Program. I am Dan Hulls from Corvallis, Montana, uh, owner, operator, and partner in Hulls Dairy Incorporated. Um, we uh, built an anaerobic digester in 2007 and uh, are very proud of that uh, accomplishment. My name is Fred Stewart. I live in Missoula, Montana, and I bought the farm next to me to put in an orchard. I started planting my trees in 2011. I have a U-Pick orchard. It's just apples and raspberries. It's certified organic. And I was a farmer in a previous lifetime. Otherwise, this is a new experience for me. So I'm just starting to hear about anaerobic. In my biology classes, I knew the difference between aerobic and anaerobic. I'm just now starting to hear about this as a process to provide nutrients for plants for my orchard. So how did you get it? sounds like you've been doing it for a long time. What our main focus was when we first started the, the anaerobic digester was odor control. Okay. And then discovered that we had a very valuable nutrient source as we developed that process for the odor control. Uh, secondarily, we generated some electricity, enough to run the dairy farm and a couple of bitterroot houses. So Dan, as I think about this and I see the magnitude of your operation, I'm wondering what it would take to, to set up a digester on my orchard and build it. I mean, I may have to build part of it myself. I don't mind doing that but uh, do you have any insight or any suggestions about well, Fred, I, I'm, I'm interested in, in uh, what your feedstocks are. What, what do you have to, that, you're, that you're planning to digest? That, that's a good question. Um, <clears throat> two years ago, I bought a chipper shredder to use to grind up my pruning material because I, I don't like burning it. I'd like to be able to compost it and do something with it. So I have that material that I could use as a feedstock. And I, I would wonder about apples as a feedstock source because on occasion, last year there were two times we had big wind events, put a lot of really nice apples on the ground. And then, you know, what do I do with all of them because they I don't have refrigeration, so they won't keep for yeah. very long. I, I, I would think that, that they, would, they would work really well in the, in the digester. I, I'm new to this, so I have not looked at all into what kind of equipment might be available for small farm operations. Because, you know, I'm not even 1% of the material that you would produce. Right. But I still have needs for the nutrient for my, for my orchard. I think to build a system to fit your scale, the, the knowledge is certainly out there on, on how to do that and, and what you would need to do. I, I, I don't think it would be too challenging. Uh, and especially if you could find some, some of the material and or the, the tanks that were produced um, somewhere that, 
would allow that to happen. Our feedstocks are, I think, apples and oranges, so to speak, in that we had dairy manure and, and a substantial volume of it and a constant flow. Yeah. So th those those differences will be will will end up with a little different process, I would imagine. So my operation would be quite different than your operation. Quite different. Yep. Yes. Still feasible and still doable, but a, a completely the same. The digestion is the digestion, but how you feed it, how you prepare it, all those things are going to be completely different. Yeah. Another thing that, that just occurred to me was uh, you have a sludge that's coming out uh, for your feedstock. Did you need to add water to that? On the effluent, on the, on the exit side of the di digester, we did not add water. We actually ran that through a screw press separator to extra extract the, the uh, moisture from that product. Okay. And so we had a, a liquid fraction and a solid fraction. And so the solid fraction we sold for fertilizer, um, we called it Afterburner Boost, okay. Lawn and Garden Fertilizer, and mm -hmm. it, it worked out, works out really well. People, there's high demand for it. Sell a good amount of it in bulk, uh, a good amount of it in bags. Um, the liquid fraction went into a line lagoon, and then we irrigate with it, add it to our irrigation system. Oh. And dilute it with the with the irrigation water. Add it as a liquid fertilizer. Hmm. So on a on a day to day basis, you've got a dairy farm and the cows are there all the time. How much work was it in terms of keeping this processing, the digester going? It was it was uh, there was a daily it was a, one of the daily chores. To take okay. care of to take take care of the digester, we we had it have it set up so that we could monitor the the operation from my cell phone. So it's it's not something you can just start up and walk away from. No, you have to <laughs> you got to pay attention. Uh, in our case, a daily a, there was there was daily activity. Yeah. For my size of an operation, it doesn't sound like it would be a particularly big problem to, to run once you get it going and just kind of it's, it would seem to me that you would be able to, to do a batch type operation and it, it wouldn't need daily 365 days a year care would you do it again knowing what you know now would, would absolutely you? yeah okay yeah absolutely okay. I'd do a few things differently well, but you, but that's because of experience <laughs>The beginning of the digester process starts here where the manure is pulled down to this area and falls into the, into the underground uh, transfer alley right here and then it flows underneath our feet over to uh, our mixed tanks in this area here. The process then would be the overflow from the, from the barn water and the digested liquid portion of the effluent would flow to our lagoon. Before that, the, the portion of the effluent from the digester would be pumped into our separator building. We would separate the liquid fraction from the solids fraction. Here we have tank number one of our two tank system. There are 30,000 gallon tanks in which we, we digest the uh, slurry manure. The manure comes in through the heat exchanger where it's heated with the hot water that's generated by the generator to cool it and it flows into the tanks at about 120 degrees and it fills the tanks from the bottom. The gas comes off the top of the tanks. Um, at, the, at the top of the tank it forms an automatic blanket which is uh, the term was induced blanket reactor. This is the generator room. The generator is uh, powered by a 454 cubic inch Chevrolet engine, runs the, runs the generator. The biogas comes in. We capture the heat from the engine. 
through the, we capture the exhaust heat as well as the heat from the water to cool the engine. That goes back out into the heat, heat exchanger that we saw earlier and heats the effluent coming into the digester. The uh, generator process generates our electricity. The final step in the process is separating the solids fraction from the liquid fraction. The solids fraction is composted and then we sell that composted portion as our afterburner boost fertilizer at retail outlets throughout the valley in western Montana. Local gardeners loved it because it, it grew the best tomatoes ever. Um, it was highly prized for lawns as well, the grass. If, if you like to mow your lawn, that was wonderful. If you didn't, it was not a good thing because your lawn grew too fast.